your baby boy would one day walk on water. Mary, did you know that your baby boy would save our sons and daughters? Did you know that your baby boy has come? This child that you delivered will soon deliver you. Mary, did you know that your baby boy would give sight to the blind man? Mary, did you know that your baby storm with his hand. Did you know that your baby boy has walked where angels try? And when you kiss your little baby, you kiss the face of God. Oh, man.
bless you, God bless you, God bless you. Praise God, praise God. This is Resurrection Sunday. Hallelujah. We give God all honor, all the glory, and all the praise. Amen. For he died, he rose, that we may live. Amen. We give God praise. I want to thank God for all of you that have tuned in to Resurrection Sunday. Amen. This is a glorious time for the church. Amen. This is when our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ rose from the dead. Amen. We don't know what day it was, but all, all I know is that one day he rose in my heart. One day he changed my life, and I've never been the same. And so we thank God for you being here on this Resurrection Sunday. Amen. If you would, let us bow our heads, and we're going to go to the throne of grace, and then we're going right into the message. Amen. Father, in Jesus' name, we give you praise, honor, and glory. We thank you for your love that you displayed through your son, Jesus Christ. Thank you for the blood that he shed because he loved us so. And, oh, God, this is the day that you have made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. We thank you for your grace and your mercy and your agape love that loved us when we were yet in sin. You was loving on us. And so we give you glory. We want to show our gratitude this morning. Hallelujah. For your great sacrifice that you gave for us. In Jesus' name. Bless everyone that's listening, everyone that is tuned in. Bless their families. Bless them, I pray, in the name of Jesus. Let the joy of the Lord be our strength. In Jesus' name we pray. And the people of God said amen and amen. Hallelujah. We want to thank God again for you being here on Resurrection Sunday. Amen. This is an exciting time for the church. And I have a word. Amen. I have a word this morning. The word is the Lamb of God. The Lamb of God. If you would turn with me to Genesis, the 22nd chapter, I'm going to read verse 5 through 8. Genesis, the 22nd chapter, verse 5 through 8. Amen. I'm going to give you a few minutes to get there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And it reads like this. And Abraham said unto his young man, Abide ye here with the beast, and I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come again to you. And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac his son. And he took the fire in his hand and the knife, and they went both of them together. And Isaac spake unto Abraham his father and said, My father. And he said, Here I am, my son. And he said, Behold the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Eight verse. And Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for the burnt offering. So they both went together. Amen. God will provide himself a lamb for the burnt offering. The message this morning on Resurrection Sunday is the lamb of God. Hallelujah, the Lamb of God. I don't know about you. Hallelujah, there's a lot of things going on in our world today, but I'm so glad that Jesus came. And I'm so glad that he did what he did. I'm so glad of the blood that he shed because that blood gives me access to everything heaven has to offer. I'm so glad that he loved me so much that when I was in sin and I was doing my thing, he died for me when I wasn't even thinking about him. And I thank him. I give him glory and honor. If you would, the second chapter of Genesis. The second chapter of Genesis. Verse 15 through 17. Verse 15 through 17. And it reads like this. And the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. And the Lord... God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree in the garden thou shalt freely eat. 17th verse. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eateth, therefore thou shalt surely die. In the day that thou eateth, thou shalt surely die. I pose this question to you on Resurrection Sunday. Satan did not create death. God did. If Satan had created death, he would be more powerful than God. We notice here that 
God gives the command to man and he said there's a tree in the midst of the garden and don't eat that tree because in the day you eat that tree there's something called death. And when you eat that tree, death is going to kill you. Hallelujah. But the awesome thing is that God created death powerless. So death was present, but it was powerless as long as man kept the command of God. Hallelujah. So here's this thing that God creates called death. And God tells man that if you disobey my word, then death is going to kill you. But he's here, but he's powerless. And as long as you abide by my word and you do what I say, death has no power over you. Amen? The Lamb of God. Now turn to Genesis, the third chapter, and I want to read the seventh verse, and then I want to go to the 21st verse. Seventh verse reads like this. And the eyes of them both were open. And they knew they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. So Adam and Eve sinned. Now, sin means rebellion. Adam and Eve rebelled against the word of God, and when they rebelled against the word of God, they activated this thing called death. When they rebelled against the word of God, this thing called death became alive. And they realized that they were naked. And so because they had now rebelled or sinned, they, do, they did what a lot of us try to do when we mess up. We try to cover our sins ourselves. And what happened was they made aprons to cover themselves. And it's amazing how when you got an apron on and you don't have no clothes on under it, then all you cover is the front, but the back is open and the sides is open and under your feet and around your feet is open, so you only cover just a little bit. Amen. And the Bible says that they went and hid themselves and when God came in the cool of the evening looking for them, he, he couldn't find them. And so he called out for them and wanted to know where they were and they began to tell him this is what happened. And if you would look at the 20 first verse, because this is very important. The 21st verse of that same chapter says this, unto, unto Adam also, and to his wife, did the Lord God make coats of skin, coats of skin, and clothe them. Hallelujah. The Lamb of God. Their covering of their sin, of their rebellion, was not good enough. And so God made coats of skin to cover them. The, the, the Bible says this, the wages of sin is death. In other words, the payment, the penalty, the penalty, Romans 6, 23, the penalty of sin is death. And, and, and what God said was when you disobey my word, when you sin, when you go into open rebellion against my word, then the penalty of that that I have placed is death. And so when you do that, I got to make sure that death kill you. Hallelujah. But what he did was, he made them coats of skin, meaning that an animal had to, an innocent animal, had to shed its blood. An innocent animal had to give its life in order for Adam and Eve to be clothed. Now, as, as I think about that, just, just go over for a few minutes. I don't think that God killed the animal and in clothing them, he wiped the blood off. I think that when he killed the animal, he took the blood of that animal that was inside that coat and covered them. In other words, the blood of that animal covered them under that coat. Hallelujah. Because there has to be a blood sacrifice in order to appease God because what God said was the day that you sin, you will surely die. Hallelujah. So what happened? 
Adam's blood now is contaminated. Adam's blood now has the DNA of rebellion. And so every person that's going to see Adam was the only one created in God's image. Everyone that came after Adam was created in Adam's fallen image. And so every one of us that came after Adam, we came with the DNA of rebellion. We came with the DNA of sin. We came with the DNA of disease and sickness. And so what God had to do, God had to make a way. Hallelujah. He had to make a way for a sacrifice to come that had pure blood. He had to make way for a sacrifice to come that had blood that wasn't contaminated. He had to make a way for a sacrifice to come that had blood that wasn't filled with DNA of rebellion, DNA of sin. And what we know that he brought that sacrifice in the form of his son, Jesus the Christ. Hallelujah. Now, as we move on, we go to, let's go to Luke, the first chapter. Hallelujah. Luke, I, I believe you need, to, you need to read the word and see what the word is saying. So you don't say, I said it. But you need to know where the word is. Because the Bible said, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I may not sin against thee. Well, in order to hide in your heart, you got to study it. Amen. Luke, the first chapter, and I want to look at the 31st verse. Hallelujah. 31st verse. And it says this. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name, what? Jesus. His name, Jesus. What is God saying? God is saying, I have to make sure that pure blood, pure blood has to redeem man. See, I got, I got a dilemma. And it's not a dilemma, but God, God said it so that if you sin, death becomes active. Death can't be active unless you sin. But if you sin, God made it so that death would become active. But now that man sinned, God had to make a way to take care of death. And in order to take care of death, he needed someone with pure blood that wasn't tainted with the rebellion of sin, that wasn't tainted with sickness and disease. He needed DNA blood from heaven. And so what he did... He had a version called Mary. And he took the Lamb of God and placed her in the womb of Mary. Not in the fallopian tube, but in the womb. Because in the fallopian tube is where man and the woman get together, where God bypassed that because he didn't need DNA from man. All he needed was for Mary to provide a body that he could come into the earth and be legal. And so what he did, he took that body, put it in her womb so she could eat her baby. He put it in her womb so that baby could grow. He would grow, but he had the DNA of heaven. He was not tainted with the bloodline of man, but what he had was a pure bloodline. Oh, my God. From heaven. Because, see, God loved you so much, it took the death of God to redeem you. Moses couldn't do it. Elisha wasn't good enough. Daniel wasn't good enough. Because their blood was tainted too. It had to take the blood of God. God had to come and die for you. And so when God did, he said, okay, I got a plan. Hallelujah. See, nothing takes God by surprise. He said, there's a lamb that I got that's been slain from the foundations of the earth. Meaning that I have already provided this lamb. This lamb has already been waiting because I knew things weren't going to work out. So I have a lamb from the foundations of the earth with pure DNA. Blood that's not tainted. Blood that's not mixed with nothing but heaven. Hallelujah. Oh, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now look, go to Leviticus. Woo. Go to Leviticus. That's way back in the Old Testament. Come on, follow with me. Leviticus, I think it's the fourth chapter. Hallelujah. There's something about the blood. There's something about the blood. Leviticus, the fourth chapter, and the, I'm sorry, Leviticus, the 17th chapter. 17th chapter. 
the 13th and the 14th verse. Leviticus 17, 13, and 14. Hallelujah. This is what it says. And whatsoever man there be of the children of Israel, or of the stranger that sojourn among you, which hunteth and casteth any beast or fowl that may be eaten, he shall even pour out the blood, therefore, and cover it with dust. For it is the life of all flesh. The blood of it is for the life thereof. Therefore I say unto the children of Israel, you shall not eat the blood of no manner of flesh. For the life of the flesh is in the blood. Therefore, whosoever eateth it shall be cut off. What is God saying? God said, look here. Don't eat or drink the blood from any animal. See, there's, there's a paradox to the blood. The blood has life, but also the blood has death. The life of that animal is in the blood. Amen? And what the Bible, all through the Bible, God has telling the children of Israel, don't you eat blood. Don't you drink blood. Amen? Why? Because if you eat or drink tainted blood, if you eat or drink the blood of an animal, then what you get is every disease that that animal had, you received it. Hallelujah. Every disease that that animal had, you received it. So what God told them was this. Don't eat or drink the blood of any animal. Hallelujah. But there was a place in the Bible. Hallelujah. I believe about the 26th chapter of Matthew where Jesus says, okay now, to eat the blood, of, to drink the blood. Jesus has a meeting, a supper with his disciples. And Jesus began to give the bread. And he said, take, eat, this is my body. Then he get the cup and he said, here, drink, for this is my blood. Yeah. See, now you can eat the blood. You can drink this blood because this blood is pure. This blood is not contaminated. This blood is not tainted. This blood is pure DNA from heaven. Then you can drink this blood because this blood has life in it, has no disease, has pure life. Jesus said this, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man coming to the Father but by me. He said, you can drink all of the blood of me you want because the more blood you drink, the more life you get. There's no disease in this blood. There's no rebellion in this blood. This blood is pure blood. The Lamb of God. The Lamb of God. Wait, wait a minute. What are you saying? About the Lamb of God. Well, for 4,000 years, hallelujah, for 4,000 years, the children of Israel, they brought their lamb and presented their lamb to God that appeased everything for one year. Hallelujah. But the Bible says that when, when, when Abraham told Isaac God would prepare himself a lamb, the Bible said that, 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 that uh, John the Baptist looks up one day and he says, Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sins of the world. Well, this is not our Lamb. This is the Lamb of God. Because, see, God had to find a way to take care of death because he had instituted that when man sinned and rebelled, death would come alive. Yes, Lord. And death would take man out. But he understood that even if that happened, I got to do something about death. And so I got a lamb over here that's slain from the foundation of the earth. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring my lamb. You won't have to bring your lamb no more. I'm going to bring my lamb. Behold the lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. I'm bringing my lamb and I'm only going to bring him one time and he's going to sacrifice himself one time and you ain't got to come back next year. You don't have to come back the year after next month. This is going to be one time and one time only. Once he shed his blood and do his thing, it's going to be for all generations. Hallelujah. Behold the Lamb of God. Oh, come on now. But see, there's a problem. There's a problem here. They can't kill Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. They tried to kill him on C 
several occasions. That the Bible said one time they were going to push him over the cliff. And, and the Bible said he just walked right through the middle of him, right through the middle of the crowd, and went on about his way. There were plenty of times they wanted to kill him, but they couldn't touch him because he had no sin. And the Bible said the only way you can die is that you got sin because the Bible said the wages of sin is death. But Jesus walked the earth sinless. No sin. If you want an example of how to live, hallelujah. Don't look to nobody because if you look to somebody, you're going to either feel inferior or you're going to feel superior. There's only one example that God gave us and that example is Jesus Christ. He walked the earth sinless. Hallelujah. Met the woman that were caught in adultery. Didn't bring the man, they brought the woman. I don't understand why they didn't bring the man because she wanted an adultery by herself. But that's another lesson for another time. And brought her, and, and, and they said, that The law said, Stone her, kill her. What do you say? Jesus stoops down and right on the ground. I don't care what nobody tell you, don't nobody know what he wrote. I don't care if somebody tell you, if they tell you that, they tell you something wrong, but they don't know what he wrote. But after he wrote, then he said this, he that is without sin, let him cast a stone. Whoa, 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 whoa. And he just looked down. Didn't he what? And the Bible said, as their own conscience condemned them, they began to walk away from the least to the greatest. Hallelujah. Here's the Lamb of God that take away the sins of the world. Hallelujah. That DNA pure blood. He said, Woman, where are thine accusers? She said, No man, Lord. He said, But well, neither do I accuse thee. Go and sin no more. The Lamb of God. But then he can't die. Because he walked in the streets of Jerusalem pure. With no sin. The Bible says that the devil tried to chip them and tell them that if you if you be the if you be the son of God, then do this. If you be the son of God, do that. And even in the temptation, he left the temptation still pure without sin. But we got a problem now because God has to make a way to get rid of this death. And Jesus is the lamb that's gonna take care of death. However, the lamb of God ain't got no sin. See, back when the, the children of Israel took their lamb, not only was the blood of the lamb tainted, but the blood of the children of Israel that were taking the lamb was tainted. But God allowed that because all of that pointed to this lamb, the lamb of God. Well, here's the lamb of God. The lamb of God is here. But he can't die because he has no sin. Hallelujah. Jesus told the disciples, he said, look, destroy this temple. In three days, I'm going to rise it up again. I got that command of my father. He said, I got the power to lay my life down, and I got the power to lift it back up. Hallelujah. But we got a problem because he has no sin. And if you got no sin, you can't die because the wages of sin, the payment of sin is death. But the balance of the gift of God is eternal life. Oh, hallelujah. So what did he do? How can we fix this thing? Because he was born to die. Amen. He came into the world to die. But he can't die. Because he got no sin. What he did was. He took your sin. He figured I got to have some sin. So what I'm going to do. I got to die. And I can't die right now. But I know that the wages of sin is death. And I know that sin will activate death. Hallelujah. So if sin activates death, I got to find a way. This is Jesus. I got to find a way to activate death because death is not activated because I'm sinless and I'm walking a sinless life. And I got to die. Hallelujah. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take your sin. I'm going to take the things that you done did. The things that you done did and you know you were messing up and you seem to couldn't stop messing up. What I'm going to do, I'm going to take that sin. Because I love you so much, I'm going to take it all on me. Because see, I created death. And I told death to become active when man sinned. But now if one man sinned, 
caused the world to die, then there has to be another man. There has to be another man that's going to put everything back together. See, Adam was the first Adam. Hallelujah. But notice the scripture that called Jesus the second Adam. It calls him the last. You know why I call him the last? Because see, when Adam failed and when Adam sinned, Adam lost his image. Adam lost the image of God. And it's so, it's, it's so wonderful that the fact that if you have an original, woo, you got an original uh, 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 document. Hallelujah. And you make copies of that original document. And some happen to cause that original document to be lost or cause that original document to be distorted. Well, that's okay because I still got the original. That's still an original. The original is the word of God, Jesus Christ. So what it, the last, actually last means original. That's why I just said he's the second Adam. He's the last Adam, which makes him the original one. So if Adam sinned, I got an original one. We still got the image of God. And the image of God is in the person of Jesus Christ. And so what he does, he takes the sins of the world. Hallelujah. They beat him all night long. Woo. Beat him to the point where you can't recognize him. Blood all over the place. See, when Adam and Eve were clothed with the blood of that animal, I believe that when he clothed them, the blood of that animal just went all over their body to cover them. And so because the blood of that animal had to be killed, and they had to kill that animal, then uh, and that man died with an Adam, well, this man got to die, which is Jesus Christ. And so what they did, they beat him to a bloody point. They beat him so bad that you couldn't recognize him. Hallelujah. He took the cross for you and I. Oh, yes, he did. And the Bible said he hung on the cross. The thief said, if you be God, come down and bring us down too. But there was another thief that realized that we're supposed to be up here, but this man haven't done nothing. And so what this thief said is, Lord, when you come into your kingdom, remember me. And Jesus said, this day, this day, thou shalt be with me in paradise. What was he saying? He won't say today, right now, you're going to paradise because he won't go into paradise. He would get ready to go to hell. But what he was saying was, when I come into my paradise, you're going to be there. Yes. Hallelujah. And the Bible said they hung him up. Well. And he hung there. The sky was dark. And I believe as the sky was dark, every disease known to man was placed upon that body. Every sickness known to man was placed upon that body. And the Bible says after it was all over, so he looked up and said, it is finished. It is finished. And the Bible said, they didn't take the ghost. He gave up the ghost. Oh, Lord have mercy. But that went on. They had to it on in now. See, we, got, we have sins that we had to pay. We supposed that went to hell. And so what he did, he went to hell for us. And for three days and three nights, the devil and all of his imps had a good time because Jesus was in their prison cell. Oh, hallelujah. But the Bible tells me on the third day, yeah. when the penalty of death was fully paid, hell could hold it no more. Hell could hold it no more. There's a scripture in the Bible that said, Oh, death, where is thy sting? Oh, grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death, Jesus took the sting. See, when we leave this life, there's a, there used to be a sting of death. But Jesus took the sting out of death, and he took the victory out of the grave. Understand this. When you leave this life, the authority of Jesus will meet you on the other side. Let me say it again. When you leave this life, the authority of Jesus will meet you on the other side because just because you leave this life, you don't leave his authority. His authority is on this side and his authority is on that side. Hallelujah. Once the Bible Paul put it like this, who can separate me from the love of God? He said, can tribulation and can pearl, can sore tribulate, uh, separate me? He said, no. He said, I found out that nothing can separate me from the love of God that's in Christ. Jesus. What do you mean? Death can't separate you. Woo, y'all better follow me. 
Death can't separate you from the love of God. Because what he did, he took the sting out of death for you. He took the victory out of the grave for you. And all you do is transitioning from one place to the other. And when you get when you're on this side, the authority of Jesus is here. And when you get on the other side, his authority will be there too. The Bible says, "Is it? You know, if you go into the uppermost parts of the earth, I'm there. If you make your bed in hell, I'm there. Where can you go to separate yourself from the love of God? If you know it, Hallelujah, you've accepted Him as your Savior. He didn't die. Listen, He did not die to prove that He was more powerful than Satan. Jesus said, to Jesus said, I beheld Satan fall from heaven." Like light. I was there. I was there. I didn't come to prove I was more powerful than Satan. I'm more powerful than Satan before I got here. I'm more powerful than Satan right now. What I came to do was to redeem you. You needed redeem. You needed a bloodline that was pure. You needed a bloodline that was a chain. By sins rebellion. You needed a bloodline that was attainted with sickness and disease. And so what I did, the blood that I shed became your blood. Once you accept me as your savior, then the blood I shed become your blood. Now, the blood that's running through your veins, the blood that runs through your spiritual veins is DNA from heaven. Untainted, pure, unadulterated power of God flowing yes. through your veins. Because he lived, I can face them all. Because he lived, all fear is gone. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a sound mind. My mind is sound because the Lamb of God has come. He has sacrificed himself for my sin. And now I'm the righteousness of God through Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. He made me right. There. It ain't because I look good. It ain't because I come to church every Sunday. It ain't because I dot all my eyes and cross all my teeth. He made me righteous because he loved me and he deemed me righteous. In other words, just like in England when they said, I deem you, I dub you as a knight. Jesus said, I make you righteous, not because you're so good, but because I love you so much. Amen. Amen. Behold, the Lamb of God will take it away the sin of the world. Pure Lamb. Well, if he take or took away your sin, if he took away your sin, then death can't keep you. The grave can't hold you. Why? Because Jesus made you sinless because of his blood. He did it, not you. His blood, his blood did it, not you. In other words, so when you leave this life, and all of us got to go sometime, but when you leave this life, death ain't got no more sting. Grave ain't got no more victory. Why? Because Jesus took the sting out of death. He took the victory out of the grave. And because he rose, we know we will rise too. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Ooh, we all right. I'm getting ready to close. I'm getting ready to close. I'm getting ready to close. In my closing. In my closing. He that knew no sin, not only took sin, but became sin. He became that which was totally against who he was. All because he loved you and he loved me. This is Resurrection Sunday. Hallelujah. Let me say this. Do you know him? Is he your Lord or is he your Savior? Do you have a relationship with him? I'm not asking you if you go to church and you shake the preacher's hand. Amen. You can shake my hand all day long. I can't get you into heaven by shaking my hand. Do you know him as your Lord? Have you asked him to come into your heart and be Lord of your life? I didn't say, are you perfect? No, you ain't perfect. None of us are perfect. But the God that we serve is perfect. Is it a time in your life you remember when you asked Jesus to come into your heart and, and be Lord of your life? Is it a time you remember when you asked him to forgive you for your sins? If you haven't done that, then he hasn't come because he won't force his way on you. But if you want to do that, we can do it right now. And it will take about a few seconds. A few seconds for you to become a citizen of the kingdom of heaven. Amen. If that's you this morning, I want you to bow your head and I want you to repeat after me. Don't worry about whether you're going to be perfect tomorrow because you're not. What you need to understand is I need to make a step toward Jesus. 
There's a lot of things going on in the world today. And I believe what God is saying is you need to open your eyes to me. The world is not going to continue to go on like it's been going on. At some point in time, God's going to call time to a stop. Amen. I'm not saying this right now. I'm not saying this right now because there's too much preaching to do. There's too much of the kingdom of the word of the king to get out. But what I'm saying is that there's going to be a time where God is going to say it's time. I'm asking you, when he come back, are you ready? Are you ready? Have you accepted him? Not do you think you're ready, because it's the bad thing to be thinking you're ready. You need to know you're ready. And so if you haven't accepted him, I want you to bow your heads with me and repeat after me. Father, in the name of Jesus, I admit I'm a sinner. I was born in sin, shaking and nicotine. Lord, I feel that I need you. Lord, come into my life. Be Lord of my life. I ask you to forgive me of my sins. Save me now in Jesus' name. If you pray that prayer, if you pray that prayer, he can. See, everything is by faith. Everything is by faith. If you did that, God is coming to your life. I want you to give us a call. Let us know that you accepted him and help us to help you to become a disciple of Jesus Christ. Those of you that are sick, if you're sick out there, I want to pray for you. Amen. If you have a disease or something that's bothering you and you have a ailment in your body, I want you to know something. I'm not a healer, but the God I serve is. And so if you would, just place your hand on whatever the ailment is. Father, in the name of Jesus, I speak to that body now. And I command that body to be healed in Jesus' name from head to toe. To be healed in the name of Jesus. We thank you right now. We give you glory and honor. I would ask you to stop moving that which you couldn't do. Try to do the things you couldn't do at first. I believe God has healed you. If he has, get in touch with us. Let us know what God has done. We want to thank God for all of you. Thank you for tuning in. Amen. This is Resurrection Sunday. Hallelujah. The most important thing is, that, has he had a resurrection in your heart and in your life? God bless you. We'll see you next time. Amen. Thank you.